Hey everyone, I'm Mark or Marka. Uh, that's me with the Clonex down there. Uh, my quick background is uh, I run a digital agency in real life. Uh, I was the co-founder of NFT Melbourne, which happened last or this yeah last February. Uh, in terms of fashion, my wife is an artist and she worked in fashion for ten years. We then set up uh, one of the first printed yoga mat companies. Um, I'm also a bit of a developer as well, so digital and fashion is a big part of has been a big part of my life. Uh, Secure, I'll let you just introduce yourself. Yeah, sick. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you for coming to the last session on the second day. That's not a bad effort. Uh, save the best till last. And then I find out Rochelle's last in the other room. So I'm like, maybe that shoe fits. Um, and who puts a sneakerhead on before a sneakerhead? <laughs> I like that Jordan line was something I'm going to talk about later. But look, um, very simply, uh, I've been an artist and designer for the best part of 20 years, and a big part of that 20 years has actually been on the brand side. So I worked for Nike for eight, nine years, uh, Converse for three, four years, Puma for three, four years, and in amongst that, I've done art and design for pretty much every sneaker brand you can uh, mention. Uh, I've done a Jordan collab, I've worked with Australian brands like Globe, I've designed toys for Kid Robot, um, done art for some of the biggest toy companies in the world. Uh, and I've always kind of found myself uh, interested in the emergence of subcultures. And I am an idiot collector who has too much of too many things. So uh, I have 500 pairs of shoes and I rent storage because I can't fit them in my house. It would make my girlfriend very angry. So uh, for me, the digital fashion element is like the 2020 version of what sneakers was to me in the early 2000s and what toys was to me in the 2010s. So uh, the emergence of a subculture that ties in so many things that I'm passionate about uh, is an exciting place to be because we all know that shoes and toys have like exploded. That kind of roadmap has run its, uh, its path. And I think this is the future of where, you know, those kind of things come to life for me. Awesome. Thanks, mate. And I just want to draw attention to his own shoes that he's got on so if you if you can zoom in or if you can have a look it's his dead fellas that he's hand painted himself so each shoe takes what like 10 15 hours a little bit more like depending uh i won't go through that let's just say 20. yeah so he's an artist as well so that's honestly have a have a look up close they're just incredible uh so digital fashion we'll, we'll focus on the digital fashion as um probably not touch on the storytelling too much because we haven't got much time so for me when i first heard about digital fashion I thought of, okay, so digital um, 3D objects in the metaverse, right? So we can go in and we can put our hoodie on. That's one form of digital fashion for me. Um, second form is maybe what I'm wearing at the moment, which is the Medikey hoodie. Um, it's got a little NFC chip in it, which you can just tap your phone, and that will bring me to a website um, which has the, the 3D version of this hoodie. So it's both the physical and the digital version. Uh, and then you've got other forms as well. So love to get your thoughts on, on what is digital fashion and different different variations of it yeah uh, for me it's like simply the biggest revolution coming to the streetwear and uh, sportswear scene so uh we'll get to dot swoosh later and having alex on before me was like such a rug um but uh it is essentially to me anything that can be worn from an apparel footwear accessories point of view that helps convey a feeling sentiment emotion brand allegiance that um, you know, makes you happy, excited and communicates who you are as a person uh, to the wider world. So uh, pretty general statement, but I think, you know, digital fashion encompasses so many things uh, and some of those we'll go through in the next sort of 15 to 20 minutes. But um, yeah, it's like nice. all been kicking off. What a time to have like this discussion because I feel like the last like three to four weeks has just been like, you know, uh, crypto NFT fashion news like every day. So it's great timing. Exactly. And we've got some slides up. So you can see on uh, the next slide, just pretty much every big fashion company has entered the space in various different ways. So I guess the question is, like, why are they entering? Is it just a money grab? Is what's the benefits to them as a, as a brand, as a company to enter? Yeah, I actually think like um, COVID has actually inspired so many of these large companies and I can only speak for the ones that I've worked to worked for or that I'm still speaking to uh, regularly to look at additional opportunities for revenue because the supply chain has been absolutely decimated over the last two to three years. Um, cost of goods, shipping, freight, warehousing, blah, 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 infinitely expensive. Uh, if you look very simply at the forge of the Air Force Ones for Artifact, via Nike, there was 1,224 pairs of Air Force Ones and it brought in about $5 million worth of revenue. And what is it, 12 3D rendered Air Force Ones. Uh, and they also retailed for about five times the price of a regular Air Force One. So the business case for large companies to 
move into the digital world and start to flex their responsibility and I would say like brand ethos to a wider audience that is available to them in every house behind every monitor in the world uh, has become increasingly desirable because the erosion of their profitability is very marginal by comparison to the production of even a pair of socks. So, um, you know, if we look at the Azuki um, slide that was on just prior to that, and I'm happy that it's cycling because I'll get stuck on one thing, but, you know, the fact that they were able to partner with a brand that has the recognition of Ambush with an icon like Ewan uh, is phenomenal. Uh, and, you know, regardless of what you think about Azuki, um, you know, from a brand allegiant point of view, that brand aesthetically fits their audience better than most brands have been able to exhibit that in the space so far. So I don't know if you want me to go on like about dot swoosh for like five, but... No, I think we'll talk about some specific projects in a second. Um, and for me as well, I think crypto gets a lot of backlash, right? And we used to hear a lot about it in terms of the environmental aspect. Um, obviously, proof of stake helps that a bit with Ethereum. But talking to Zakir earlier on was like, if you think about it, there's so much fashion out there. And that was one of the reasons why my wife sort of left it was because she just saw the mass produce production of just you know millions of scarves or whatever else so what's happening now is that these brands are they're making the 3d version of it um you can go and buy that 3d version only uh, and collect it and maybe not choose to actually redeem the physical right so you're saving all that environmental waste of production of the sneaker and sending it out etc um so i think it's a positive thing right the kids in the future will they'll just buy the 3d version and instead of storing that you know, like you with your 500 um, pairs of sneakers, you, uh, you're not, you know, you still might be redeem them or you might have the hybrid where you do both, where you have the physical and the digital. So I think that's something that's, yeah, such a big positive. So, um, yeah, so now to touch on some specific projects. So Dead Fellas, which is an Aussie project, have just branded, uh, collabed with Wrangler, which is awesome. Uh, obviously, I'm a clone X, so the big Nike uh, artifact collab is probably one that a lot of people talk about. We've Gucci, we've got everything else. So yeah, maybe touch on a couple of those projects that yeah. you... Yeah, uh, you would have lost your job at Nike for saying Nike. Uh, that's day one rule. Um, so yeah, I think like when you look at a platform like Dot Swoosh and go like, for me, I look at Nike as the MCU and they are the Avengers, right? You've got, you don't have Iron Man and everything, but you have Jordan, Converse, Nike, and now Artifact. And the fact that they're putting the Artifact blade next to those logos says everything you need to know about the focus and the brand direction that they're going in, right? So if we look very simply at what that platform is going to evolve into and what that means for the everyday customer and what that means to a brand like Nike, you just have to look at the dollars that are available to the audience as a participant and then also as the brand. So the sneaker reselling market on annual, like on annual average is about $6 billion. It's projected to be $30 billion by 3030. That's by 2030. Geez, 3030. It'll be a lot more than that. <laughs> uh, and the average um, like sneaker fashion consumption for an annual year over the last three years has been $126 billion. You have not only the opportunity to scrape the top of the revenue of the secondary market that you've never had the opportunity to do before by maintaining royalties of sales, uh, using Alex's example of the Jordan 3 Travis Scott, which I like to use. If you were to sell 250,000 digital versions of that Travis Scott buy size that were redeemable to be burnt, it would be a $28 million transaction. So you have these like enormous economies of scale that are available with very little margin erosion. Um, and then you are so also cutting out like superfluous additional players in the market that a lot of the big brands don't like, you know, resellers and then bodying, backdoor sales of product. They're actually able to maintain and drive a vertical revenue stream, uh, which is extremely exciting for them. And then I would argue, um, which is more important than almost anything now, which is a marketing connection to the customer that's authentic and built with them directionally. So if I was to, I did a, a tweet the other day, which like blew up about like five or six things that I think that these guys are going to do. And I got told by them, I got five of them right, which is exciting. Um, mm. But look, digital marketplace, fundamental, um, no brainer, easy to understand, interoperable. Yes, uh, they wouldn't tell me how. Um, then the big one for me is the co-creation ability for the customer. Big brands don't give the keys to their products ever. The fact that Nike came out with this in an authentic way through Rug Radio, traditionally all announcements are done through Sneaker News, Hype Beast, High Snob, you know, Hype Bay, Soul Collector, right? Traditional Web2 media as we sort of heard about earlier today in some of the uh, earlier spaces. The fact that they've gone to Farouk to announce shows that they understand. Yeah. Um, and then you go, okay, they're handing the keys over to maybe an Air Force One. So whatever project, whatever founder, whoever in the world has the opportunity to have an Air Force One collab, there's probably 50 people in the world that have had that. Not only do you have that opportunity, you have, and which will 
make you famous, mm. right? Let's be honest, that's your career made if you're interested in that side of the world. Plus then you have the opportunity to get royalties through the Nike sales mechanism, which is unbelievable. Um, and if anyone doesn't know sort of the backstory with Artifact is for the last year or two, they've been telling everyone, listen, go and learn Blender, go and learn 3D. They've put out a huge amount of tutorials and all the rest which we all thought was just to sort of go, you'd get your Clone X 3D model and you could play around with it. But they knew what was coming in the track with what Nike is doing now. So Nike has basically said, listen, we want you to create the next version of our, of, our, of our runners and clothing and stuff like that. And we'll have competitions out there. So, you know, I think they'll start off again in the digital world where you'll be able to get your digital um, shoes that you design, but then they will end up forging these and potentially giving back, as you said, royalties to, to kids and stuff. And um, when I explain NFTs to, to sort of the normies um, in terms of digital art, they still don't really get it. And I'm like, listen, you know, younger generation these days, they just learn in digital. They're learning 3D, they're learning Roblox and, and Minecraft and whatever else. They're not doing physical painting a lot of the times. A lot of them are learning you know, 3D. So now they're able to create basically for Nike and it doesn't matter how old they are, um, they can have an access to that. So. Yeah, it's yeah. like, it's not like, a, I don't want to be up here and talk about money all the time, right? Because I'm a designer who like has had terrible years of like my career where I didn't make a shitload of money. But like, I would say that, you know, if you follow the path to of least resistance for these guys, I think there's an understanding of why it comes to life. And if you look at, you know, uh, what they did in Fortnite with an like an average, you know, uh, $5 billion turnover of sales of skins, skins as a entire entity across all gaming marketplaces is approximately 30 to 40 billion annually. And then if you look at like the NFL that did a 48 hour drop on Fortnite and made $50 million for essentially putting their logos on t-shirts, like the, the revenue stream and the desire for this product is there. People spend money on these in-game assets already and aren't able to take them outside of the game or own them. Uh, Pokemon Go had a, like a billion dollar revenue last year and that's on like raid passes. So like I think the opportunity to have like ownership over these assets within the ecosystem, make them potentially interoperable and then redeemable adds an enormous amount of like I would say value to the product as a customer and like there's this thing about like wanting to flex. Like if you're into streetwear and fashion you wear it because you want it to be seen or you love it, right? But I have 480 pairs of shoes in a wardrobe that no one's ever going to see. So they're going to build digital galleries for your product. So if you are interested in being that flexor, which you know I have no criticism of, that's just a personality type, if that makes you happy, that's cool. You have the opportunity to show your collection and show what you've achieved or show what you've earned. And then who knows what that's going to become and grow into. And through the use of VR and AR, I think you'll have the opportunity to do it more efficiently than ever before. Exactly, yeah, and um, you know we're spending more and more time in the digital world, right? And it seems like a few years ago, or the Web two world, is we've lost our sense of identity. Whereas I think Web three is hopefully bringing that back. We can flourish, we can show off our clothing, whatever else. So, um, and that creator ecosystem. So I guess from a brand perspective, yeah, it does come down to dollars, and they see it. From a consumer perspective, we've touched on the, the creator side of things, but what other benefits are there for consumers out there? What are they getting from these digital digital items of clothing? Yeah, I, I think for me, it's like a, a sense of connection, right? Like. I wear the shit out of my dead fellas hoodie and it's basically falling apart. And that's because I resonate with the sentiment of that community so strongly. And I'm able to do so on an economy of scale that makes sense to me, being that it's not a global brand and it's not just a generic logo or hoodie or, or whatever, right? You have the opportunity to obviously then trade it, make money off it. And then obviously like I've been like, funded by the dead fellas to make shoes for the community and like be a part of something that brings value to me at a personal level rather than an ETH value. I think, um, you know, my entire like last 20 years of my career, like my friends have come from a, a level of shared interest. And I think this gives you the opportunity to network and participate as an individual in those like ecosystems via the lens of a brand to find a place that makes you happy. And it, I know that might like sound cheesy or bullshit to a lot of people, but like as someone who literally was like the Puma disc guy when I went to sneaker freaker events in 2003, where there was like 30 people there. And then now you go to a sneaker con and you have to line up for three hours to get in. Mm. Like it's meaningful. Like I still talk to people that I met at those events 20 years later. And I think events like this resonate the same way. I get the same feeling coming to something like this where you go whether it's digital fashion or a pfp or whatever your angle is in web3 that makes you happy that gives you a sense of belonging or community then embrace that and like whether that's a gucci belt or an air force one who gives a shit like just you know it's it's up to what makes you feel like you have 
uh, for me at least, like a place to belong and be happy and be me. And that's what I want to be online. I don't, I don't personally want to be anyone else. I might amplify a little bit, but like, you know, I think uh, I am a brand guy. I am a story guy, which is why I like a lot of brands uh, because brands with authentic stories and communication to their customer are really valuable. Uh, and I think these sort of digital tools give the brands the ability to do that on a personal level. Nice. Um, in terms of metaverse, I'm, I'm an older guy and I've heard of that sort of 3D coming from the 80s and the 90s, the noughties uh, and so on. And um, last year I was quite vocal about it in terms of all of this land sale happening. And you'd get into crypto voxels and you'd go into, um, you know, demos of other ones. And I just wasn't convinced. For me, AR, I think, is where it's really going. Um, obviously, Google Glass had a bit of a fail, but someone's going to do it. We've seen Ray-Bans come out with their story glasses recently. Um, you know, Meta's supposedly talking about some sort of wearable. And so you've seen some amazing examples lately of people who might be wearing, say, a hoodie with a, a tracker on it. Um, and then if someone's got the AR glasses, that hoodie comes to life. So you just you see me with my wings. And at conferences like this, no one really knows who anyone is, right, with, um, because they're PFPs. But down the track, we will will have, whether it's contact lenses or whatever technology, but we will all be augmented. So I see that as a huge part of it. Um, we've seen some really good examples of people on Zoom calls and they have um, you know, jewelry on that looks real. And you can't tell it's, it's fake, but it's, it's augmented you know, um, AR sort of jewelry, which you can see in some slides there. Uh, any other sort of good examples you're seeing of, of digital fashion? Yeah, I think um, so. Someone's been going to like a lot of those, like, sh like. So I did the Comic Con circuit for a long time on behalf of like some comic book companies, and like, uh, it becomes very like same same, right? I think the opportunity to walk into an environment and have an uh, artificial layer over the top of it makes it incredibly exciting. Like, I've met so many people in the last two days that are like secure, and it's like they know it's me because of my shoes, which is kind of a signal, and I'm I'm doxed. But like, I'm like, hi, um, can I see your PFP? Like, so there's kind of this like pseudo la pseudo layer between like our ability to communicate at the moment. And I think one of the things you mentioned, Artifact, like they've been encouraging their audience essentially to do this on their behalf. If you see like the implementation of this technology that they're doing from a community point of view, a lot of the clone community is like just kick-ass blender and unreal designers right so they are building this sort of mechanism in i imagine sneaker cons boring as shit when you go once you've been in the sneaker scene for a while and you know what a rare jordan looks like like unless someone has freddy krueger dunk sbs which i've seen once in my life i don't get excited so but walking into that environment and seeing you with artifact wings on like that will be super cool to me um the other thing that i think is interesting is like there's a slide uh, about a digital influencer that, that comes up um, who has famously been doing like super high-end brand campaigns since about 2017, uh, you know, famously did a CK campaign for uh, with Bella Hadid. And like, to me, like our digi digital identity and the ability to do that through dynamic traits in like upcoming series uh, and implement that from a digital point of view and then bring that into your VR life is really exciting as well. So uh, I think that influencers in the future will be digital influencers, which is why I put that slide up there. Um, you know, the brands have recognized that. And it's so funny because like high-end brands are sometimes unachievable and hard to get That's to. That's her. I didn't, yeah, yeah. I didn't know. She got 2.9 million followers. There's, there's influence, digital influencers with more followers than her. But I would say that like from a cut through point of view, she has like definitely been the highest uh, ranking. I mean, look at the brands there, right? It, it, it's so funny to me that like the high-end brands are often the pioneering ones and then the, the vehicle driving amplifying brands are the global sportswear brands and then you get the streetwear brands who take it and make it even cooler. So, And that's kind of what we've talked about. You've got like the Prada and the Gucci that are pioneering tech back in 2016, 2017. You have the amplification of the tech through like Dot Swoosh and Addy and Puma and everyone else over the last three, four years. And then you have like the streetwear guys through the lens of doing small cool projects like Kazuki uh, coming through now as well. So um, the other thing I will touch on very quickly from an AR and VR point of view is like I'm talking to people that are uh, developing essential like VR apps to try on apparel. Uh, and from a waste point of view, I'm really excited about what that means from a sustainability lens. Uh, 33 to 35% on average e-com 
fashion uh, purchases are returns. It, it takes 15 times more, it's 15 times more expensive to return a product at a factory level than it is to send out a new product. So uh, the development of these assets and tools through the lens of digital collectibles means to me that you can essentially try on these assets digitally before the acquisition happens in the first place from a sustainability point of view will be amazing uh, and is a really cool development that I know from a footwear point of view, there's brands working on an apparel point of view. And you do have to give up some privacy. You'll have to put your measurements and height and weight and everything in. But mm. I think inevitably, uh, you know, having a lot less packages come to the house and have them be right, I think is is really cool. Like the app is literally, you, you, you just hold it over your shoes and you're trying, the, you're wearing the shoes. It's nice, like, yeah. it's epic. And then the other is obviously in the mirror from an apparel point of view as well. So yeah, I think it's really, uh, really cool. But um, I look forward to being here in three years and seeing everyone with an artifact hoodie on or wings <laughs> or like their Addy hoodie or something. Yeah, nice. Um, yeah, well, I was going to maybe throw it out to the audience. Is any questions, especially with Secure's um, history there, and any yeah questions in terms of hard where to we see, right? see? Yeah, um, go from there because that's everything I wanted to cover. Um, any hands up? It's hard to see. Or we might just finish it there if that's it. Yeah, no hands up. Go on, one question. Someone stitch there you me go. up. I've got enough friends in the audience. Yeah. Uh, what's the easiest pathway for uh, creatives to get involved in this? Yeah, um, make the donut on Blender. Uh, like, I think um, I think Blender will be like the easiest tool and gateway uh, to the facilitation of this. If you actually look at like people that are creating 3D uh, fashion capsules and making them available in multiple gaming platforms already, like I actually think there's an opportunity for people to start their brands in the visual world before they ever actually have to make merch in real life. Most NFT merch sucks. It's so shit. Um, it's just, you know, I, and I think the opportunity to be creative and wild in a digital world and build a brand identity using things like Blender uh, give you the opportunity to launch a brand. I actually think that, like, you know, we're working with, like, existing brands at the moment and I'm talking to brands in Japan and the US on, like, how to make, you know, NFTs and how to get into the NFT world. And I spoke to the head of a, like, global footwear brand a couple of weeks ago and they thought NFTs were a cryptocurrency. So there's a long way to go. Um, you know, from an education point of view. But, you know, there's no reason that someone can't create an amazing digital capsule and make it interoperable and available over multiple platforms and build a brand that way. Because you can have your audience and build your capital before you have to go get a thousand garments made and then maybe have 850 of them sitting in your uh, garage like I do uh, for multiple failed streetwear labels. <laughs> and there's any other, no other questions. I was just going to say, do you, where do you see this going in the next few years? You... Um Touch base on uh, which I was amazed by is there's already a market coming up for rentable digital clothing and fashion happening already. Yeah, I, I think rentables is a no-brainer. Um, I think that you know if you look at just from like a in real life fashion lens, like rentable fashion is a huge market at the moment. Uh, there's no reason that we can't do the same thing from a digital collectible point of view. So why wouldn't you want to earn passive income through the acquisition of a rare utility? Like say there is a Jordan Three Travis Scott, like Alex mentioned before, and there's 250,000 of them. Who's to say a thousand of them aren't? in an alternate colorway uh, and then you can rent that to go to sneaker con for example and then using the chip and the vr headset or maybe you want to flex it at an event or for a pfp point of view for, for something i think uh rentables is really exciting uh, the brand integration is inevitable i think from my side this is the biggest revolution for streetwear brands for 10 to 15 years that you know if you look back um i use nike as an example because we had them on screen when they started in skateboarding everyone said they were going to fail and there was culture vultures like that was the term culture vultures no one's going to respect you Kami knows better than anyone um you know no one's going to buy it like it's all bullshit and then you know fast forward to today and they're the biggest skateboard brand in the world by a mile so I think from my side, like knowing that they're coming in and they're going in at this hard and Mark Parker's at the Maxim Awards and puts the Artifact logo up against the Jumpman, like to me, uh, it shows that it is an inevitable part of our future. I think 10 to 15%, maybe in the next like three to five years of our uh, expenditure on fashion will be digital. Uh, and, you know, if we just talk at a very basic level without inflation, that's a $15 million market, a $15 billion market. Yeah. I know I've got a lot of hoodies in my closet the last year or two since I got into NFT, so I've uh, done that. Uh, guys, we're hit pretty much on four o'clock, so thank you so much for joining this uh, second last session of the day. And go and get your, uh, your drinks. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone.